A waste of £400. Where's the town then? Where is it? Because it's not there. Oh, it was just really annoying me. And I was like, God, I've spent 250 quid on this bloody vacuum cleaner. Good morning, everybody. And welcome back to my channel. Or hi, hello, if you are new here. I hope you are looking forward to today's video. I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. And I have collected up all of my quite expensive items that I've bought over the years that I do actually regret buying. I love watching these videos myself. I don't know why, because it's almost a bit of a negative video, isn't it? But it's kind of just being very honest about expensive products, brands you get drawn into, products that are very well advertised as well, that you just see cropping up on like your Facebook page, Instagram, YouTube, and you get drawn in. I am one of those people that gets drawn in. If I see an ad quite a few times, it works on me. It'll start sinking into my head and I'll think, okay, I need to order this item, which I have done. And also if you see photos of people wearing things or videos and like you guys probably do it with me, you might see something that I'm wearing or that I talk about and then you will go and buy it. Hopefully everything that I talk about and that I wear, you buy and you do actually really like it. Because I have to say, when I was searching for all of the things that I regret buying, it was quite difficult and I was quite proud of myself because pretty much everything that I have bought and spent a, quite a lot of money on, I haven't regretted most of the things that I buy are actually more bargains. I get more excited about finding something very, very affordable that works than buying high-end stuff. That being said, I do still have a few high-end things that I love. Um, so if you wanna see a video of all of my favorite expensive purchases, like the opposite to this video that I love and think's worth it, then please leave me a comment down below and I'll happily do that one. But anyway, let's get into today's video. So I'm going to start with the item that made me want to do today's video. Um, and it is an item from Chloe. Let me firstly say that I love Chloe as a brand, honestly. Their clothing, their shoes, their handbags, I love it all. The design of it is exactly what I would go for. So I would say that Chloe is my favourite designer brand and if I could afford to shop from designer brands. I don't know if I actually would though. I don't think even if I had all the money in the world whether I would spend it all on really expensive stuff. I'm, I'd rather spend money on things like holidays, food, I don't know. But anyway, Chloe's stuff is really nice. But these, I love them, but they killed my feet. You might already know because I'm pretty sure a lot of people feel the same about this particular pair of sandals. But when I bought these, actually, I say I bought them. Ollie, I, I knew I was getting them, but Ollie did buy them for me for my birthday, which was so lovely of him. And I feel bad that I'm now moaning about them on video, but he totally agrees. I mean, he saw the state of my feet after I wore these. So anyway, they are the Chloe sandals, which I'm sure you've probably seen because I just feel like these were everywhere about a year, two years ago. And that is why I ended up wanting them because I just saw other people wearing them. And that is just the way that the world works. It is these sandals. Um, I mean, actually mine do look quite well worn. I have actually only worn them probably three times properly, but one of the times was a very, very like dusty area. Anyway, the, the dust just like got all into the canvasy bit here. Um, so they actually look like quite well worn on this canvas bit when actually I haven't worn them that much. Now, let me tell you, they come in these little dust bags. I mean, everything comes beautifully packaged. When I bought these, I think they were around about uh, just under £400, but I think they're probably more expensive now. Although I have seen, and I am tempted, they have designed this shoe, but with fur inside, which would probably sort out the problem. But where I was so disappointed with the comfort of these, um, I'm probably not tempted to then spend more money on more of them. I don't know. If you do have the fur lined ones of these, uh, please leave me a comment down below because I would love to know because I am very tempted for the summer because had these have fitted me nicely and not been the most painful shoes I've ever worn, I would have worn them all summer because they just go with every single outfit. So the main pain area is across here. So where your foot goes in here, the rub across here was terrible. Within 30 minutes of walking around in them, I wore them on holiday. I actually had like cuts in my foot. So in the top part of my foot here, there was actual cuts because it was just slicing in. I mean, who designed these and tested them out? Because I can't imagine that anybody would find these comfortable. 
Also, the base of them is very hard, very flat. There's no support in them. These shoes basically are just for photos only. Slip them on, they look pretty with outfits, but you cannot wear them out. Just a tip though, if you do already own these shoes and well, if you find them comfortable, then great. I mean, I haven't heard anybody yet that does, but if you do find them comfortable, that's good. Or maybe after a while of wear, the canvas gives a bit, but honestly, they're so hard. I just don't think that it would. But if you do own these and you are having a bit of a problem with them or you're thinking of getting rid of them, I did actually buy these little strips on Amazon, which you can just see stuck under here. They're like little foam strips and I just put them under there and this does help it does not solve the problem entirely but it means that you could probably wear them out for dinner and not be wanting to cut your feet off uh, you still couldn't wear them for a long period of time but this definitely takes the edge off how much this bit cuts into you i'll see if i can find them again i'll link them down below but they'll probably work with lots of other shoes as well so yes unfortunately these sandals were not for me and i did give them a really good go I wore them three times like i said i even bought things to put in them to try and make them more comfortable just such a shame because i just think they're the most beautiful looking sandal ever but yeah, no point, it's not practical. Practical is more important than how things look because no point being looking all good and just wishing that you were not in so much pain. So that is my first regretful buy or Ollie's first regretful buy, should I say. I think I'll probably, I've kept hold of them because where they were present, I just feel really bad if I sell them. But I think um, I will probably sell them. I feel bad. I, I, I almost feel bad selling them to someone because I think how painful they are. But then maybe someone would want to buy them purely for photos. Or maybe they don't care if it hurts or whatever. I'm possibly a bit more of a wimp. I don't know. But anything on my feet that hurts, I, I can't bear it. So these were a big no from me. A waste of £400. Okay, the next one, I think is going to be an unpopular opinion. I feel like the sandals, I've seen other people talking about them and also not liking the comfort of them. So I think that's a fair one to say. But this one, I think it's gonna be unpopular because all I hear is good things about it. And it is the Chanel bronzer. This is the Le Beige's cream bronzer from Chanel and I'm going to show you because I have used this a lot like honestly it looks gross I mean I've really got through it and it's it's a nice bronzer um I got drawn in by people talking about this and everyone saying how much they loved it and I'll be honest there's nothing wrong with the product but there's nothing spectacular about it there's plenty more products on the market from the drugstore that you could buy that do the same thing as this and last the same amount of time but do not cost how much this costs when i bought this i think it was 44 pounds which it's just a lot of money when you can just buy something that does exactly the same thing for way less money yes the packaging is absolutely beautiful yes it smells really good and it does work there's absolutely nothing wrong with it it blends beautifully on the skin I can't complain about how it works. I can just complain about the price of it. Obviously you're paying for a designer brand. That is just how the world works, isn't it? We pay more for these brands. But yeah, it's not something I would ever purchase again. Although when I first bought it, I absolutely loved it. And I thought I would definitely buy this again and again. But since then is when more products have come out that are, I would say like quite good dupes of this. That I realised that I don't actually need to repurchase this product um, when I could probably find something a little bit more affordable from another brand like Elf does something similar. I think they've even got one at Primark now but I haven't tried the Primark one. I have watched a few videos and it looks a little bit orange so I don't know about that one. The colour of this one is really good for me. It's just something that I wouldn't repurchase. Um, also I just want to say that this is my opinion on all of these products. These things that I'm going to talk about might work perfectly for someone else, but just don't work for me and vice versa. Someone else might dislike a product and it might work for me. So just take this, just take everything that I'm saying with a pinch of salt. But yes, this is my second product that I regret buying. Okay, next up is actually a pair of sunglasses from Burberry. I bought these at the airport maybe two years ago, I think. I honestly love the way that these sunglasses look, which is obviously why I bought them. But the quality of them, I don't know. They just feel like, 
I don't think I noticed it when I, cause I bought them in the airport. I don't think I noticed that they didn't feel that great when I was looking at them because I just put them on and I really like the way they look. And the lens is really good. Like it really, you know, it does work for the sun, if you know what I mean. Like they do work as sunglasses. But the quality of these just feels really bad. They've actually like stretched out. And I thought it was, I needed to tighten up. You know, they get little screws in there. I thought I needed to tighten that up. But actually it's not that. It's that the the arm here is just not, it's quite hard to show on camera, but it is just not sitting right. It's almost bent like that. And I have looked after these. They've not been sat on. Every time I wear my sunglasses and take them off, I always put them back in the case, put them somewhere safe. I'm not someone to just throw a pair of sunglasses anywhere. So I know full well that I have looked after these. So I don't know what's happened. And I don't think I have a particularly big head. I've never stretched sunglasses before, but these look like they're stretched, even though when I put them on, they've not been stretched. They just feel like they've lost their shape. This bit's gone all weird. Um, they, they're really bendy, but not in a not in a good flexible way, just in a cheap feeling way. And these were over a hundred pounds. And I just think you could buy a pair of sunglasses from any regular shop and they would feel exactly the same as this. Obviously they wouldn't have the Burberry look to them. But actually even saying that, they don't even have like Burberry written on them or anything, which is probably why I did buy them because I don't like big logos on stuff. Well, apart from I just showed you some sandals with a huge logo on. <laughs> Sunglasses, I don't like big logos. But yeah, I, I don't know. They're just, they're not the best. This is lovely. The case feels beautiful. I mean, you can tell how much I look after things. I've still got the little booklet that came with them. I've got the glasses cleaner. They just don't fit on my head anymore. So if I wear them, and put my head down they basically just fall off and i don't understand why it they they fitted me fine um in the airport well the ones because i tried like the tester ones on in the airport and then they got me a new pair so perhaps there was a problem with them and i should have opened them at the airport and checked them and because i was excited because i bought some nice burberry sunglasses i did wear them and not really notice that they were annoying and then after a little while and i and then i bought some ray-bans which i absolutely love I realise how ill-fitting these are and actually how cheap they feel. Sorry, Burberry. Sorry. I don't own anything else from Burberry, so I have no idea what Burberry stuff is normally like. But yeah, these were also a no from me. Okay, moving on. I have a product from Dior. This is the Dior Bronze Self-Tanning Jelly. So I actually had not, not seen this talked about at all, but I was buying a couple of things from the Dior website because I do love some of their stuff. And this popped up and I thought, oh, that looks like something I would really love. So I did order it um, and it is just meh. It's just the It just doesn't do anything different to another facial tanning thing that I've bought before. It smells nice, but it actually, when I say it doesn't do anything different, it barely shows up. So you, I put it on at night, so I do my normal skincare, then I'll put this on. And yeah, the next day I'll have a subtle, very, very subtle change of colour to my skin, but not enough for it to be worth the money that I paid for this. The packaging is beautiful, but I think, again, you're just paying for the Dior logo. This is not something that I'd recommend. And I actually have a very good alternative. It's not a cream, but I'll just show you that now. So the way that I actually keep like an even subtle glow tan on my face is by using this St. Moritz Self Tanner Spray. It's in the medium shade and it is a face and body tanning mist, but I just use it on my face and like decolletage area just to, just because I'm so fair and actually my face is like fairer than my body. So if I don't have any tan on my face, I just look really ill. So I like to spritz this on. I do it every other night, just do my normal skincare at night and then um, spritz this over the top and I wake up with a really nice glow. And this, I normally pick it up in Home Bargains or B&M and it's about £2.99. This was 30 something pounds. So, I mean, there's just absolutely no comparison. I mean, this maybe has some skincare product in there that would be good for you. I don't really know. But I mean, to be honest, you're probably already using skincare that you like. So you don't need anything extra from your tanner. So I just do not think this product is worth it. And I would not recommend it. And I definitely regret buying it. It is nearly empty now because I've just been using it up because I feel bad that I spent the money on it. And I want to make sure I use it. Every time I put it on at night, I wake up in the morning, I'm just like, where's the tan then? 
where is it? Because it's not there. So next up is a skincare device that I bought from Foreo. Foreo? I'm never quite sure how you pronounce this brand. I can't complain about this device. It is nice. And when I first got it, I used it probably every other day and I, I thought it was lovely. But that lasted for about two or three weeks of using it. And then I was just like bored and I don't pick it up. So this is one of them ones where I don't want to kind of diss the product because it actually is really nice. It feels lovely on the skin. It is for a mask. So you buy their mask, a little circular mask. You put them on here. You hold it in place with this little plastic thing and you turn the device on, it heats up, you connect it to an app on your phone and then you can do different routines on your face. It also has light therapy on it. So this like metal plate gets warm and then the lights come around here. I think it's, it's not even charged. That's how much I don't even use it. Um, and then you, with the mask on here, you just like massage it over your face and the masks all do different things and they're lovely. And it feels nice, like a little mini spa treatment, but it is something that I just don't use. And it was over a hundred pounds for this little device. And I don't know, I just wanna say that I do regret buying it because I just don't use it enough. And maybe I should be using it more because I've got it. Also, I ran out of the little mask things that you put on here and they're quite expensive to repurchase. So to actually get the thing that fits this, then cost you more money. So you've already spent out for the product and then you've got to buy the masks that go on there. The other good thing with this device though is you can use it with your own face mask. So sometimes I would put just one of the normal face masks that I use on my face. And then I would use this device to kind of go over the face mask and like massage it a bit and stuff. And that was nice. But yeah, I have to be honest, this is sat in my drawer for probably a year now um, and it's totally unused. I might randomly get it out and go, oh yeah, I use that thing. But I mean, it's completely flat of battery. So I obviously haven't done that for a while. So yeah, unfortunately I do regret buying this product. I haven't tried anything else from the brand. Um, I probably would try other things. Um, again, this is a brand that their ads are so good and I get drawn in by. I see their ads popping up all the time. And that is why when I saw this, I did buy it because I have seen it so many times and thought, oh, I wanna get that. But yeah, not worth it for me, unfortunately. Okay, next up is a concealer from Charlotte Tilbury and it is the Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. This had a lot of hype when it came out and I definitely got drawn in by the hype. It's, a, I think this is about 25 pounds, this concealer. And yeah, I have actually, I mean, it's pretty much still full. Um, I think I've probably used it maybe like five times. I, I always give things a really good go but I just didn't like it. It's definitely not worth the money. It breaks up on my skin. I don't know whether it's because it has skincare ingredients in it as well, and I have oily skin, that it just, it just doesn't work for me. The oils in my skin kind of mix up with the concealer and it breaks apart under my eyes. But this is the point I was making earlier when I said that something that doesn't work for me doesn't necessarily mean it won't work for you because you may have like drier skin and this is probably lovely for you. But for me, I really regret buying it. Um, yeah, 25 pounds I spent on it. Also, I have a concealer that I absolutely love and use all the time and it's six pounds. So yeah, I can't even compare them. I'll just show you that other one. So this is my absolute favorite concealer. So if you are looking for a good concealer and you do have oily skin and you just want a concealer that sets but doesn't dry you out, it doesn't crease, it just goes on beautifully. Um, it is from the Siam. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it properly. It's a Korean brand. You can buy it on Style Vanna. This is a new one. I honestly have loads. When you go on Style Vanna, you can buy bundles of them. So I just get quite a lot. Because I will say, even though it's six pounds, it's very affordable. It is quite a tiny little bottle and it probably only lasts me about a month. So I do get through them quite quickly, but it is honestly the best concealer ever. I use shades one and two generally and kind of mix them up depending on whether I'm fake tanned or not. It's also SPF 28 as well. So, I mean, we can see the difference in size though. So we've got to remember that, that this is obviously a much, how much is in here? So this has got 7.2 grams. This one doesn't actually say, but I believe I saw online that it was like four grams or something like that. So it's almost half the size, but it's still six pounds. So if you bought two of them, it'd be the same size. That'd be 12 pounds. It's still half the price of this concealer. So yeah, this one. It's just a no from me as well. 
Um, but let me just say, I love loads of Charlotte Tilbury products, but yeah, this one just didn't really work out. And then next up, I think this one is going to be a bit of an unpopular opinion as well. I'm not sure. I don't really hear it talked about that much, but it is a product from Jo Malone. Well, not just a product. I'm kind of going to talk about Jo Malone perfumes as a whole. And I don't know if people are going to come for me for this because I know that people that use Jo Malone, they like love it. There's like a Jo Malone cult. So I feel like if I say anything bad about it, people will be like, oh my God, what are you saying about Jo Malone? But it's just very, very expensive perfume. And I get it. It's strong. It lasts well. I do love perfume. Don't get me wrong. But every time I buy something from Jo Malone, because mainly I love the packaging and I always, like I said earlier, get on the hype of things. So if a lot of people say that things are good, I will then copy and get it myself. But I have to say, like, I don't really reach, I've got two Jo Malone perfumes and I don't really reach them that much. You can even see this one. I've had this probably about a year, maybe not that long, maybe like eight months. Um, and yeah, I don't know if you can really see that on camera, but I've barely used it. I do love the smell of this one. It's a very, I want to say manly smell. Um, it's vertiver and golden vanilla and it is the cologne intense so it was from a bit of a different range from their regular one so this one was very expensive I think it was about 130 pounds and yeah for me to have spent that and like barely used it I just do feel like it was a waste of money I will use it and obviously perfume does last for so long so I can keep this on the shelf and when I want to use it I will but it's not one that I reach for all the time and there's plenty of perfumes out there that are a lot less money that I would go for I love the Giorgio Armani C I love the La Vie Espelle by Lancome I also love which is always behind me now the Dialect fragrances that you can see there they're like dupe fragrances for well-known brands I do love the smell this was the one product that I was like, do I want to include this in a video? I kind of like it, but then I do regret buying it. But then when I picked it up and saw how much I'd actually used over the last probably eight months, I thought, no, that has to go on the regret buying because I've not used it. So I must regret buying it. And then last up is something that is just too big and too heavy to even show you on camera. So I'll include a picture of it on the screen and talk about it. But it is my Shark vacuum cleaner. Shark at one point was just everywhere. I mean, I follow quite a lot of like cleaning groups on Facebook and stuff. And everyone's like, Shark's amazing, Shark's this, Shark's that. And I had a Dyson, which I didn't really like that either. And then I was like, right, I'm gonna go and get a shark. And I was so excited. I went to Curry's, which if you're not from the UK and you're watching, it's like our shop for all of your home electrical goods. I went in there, I was like, yes, I'm gonna go and buy my shark. And I wanted to get it in the rose gold color, which I did get it in. And it was 250 pounds at the time. I think they've come out with new versions now. This was probably two years ago. So there are probably better ones out now. But at the time, the one that I went for was like the new one. It was rose gold. Best one at the time. Although I did go for the corded because the guy in the shop said that corded will give you better suction than the uncorded, which makes sense, I guess, because as soon as you're using the one without the cord, the cordless, I suppose you're losing charge as soon as you use it. So he advised that the corded upright shark, I don't even know what it's called, but you've seen the picture on the screen, um, rose gold one would be brilliant. And I'm really, uh, honestly, the, the the vacuum cleaner of all of these things that I bought is the thing that I'm most excited about buying at the time. So I went and bought it, bought it home, set it all up, vacuumed. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I love it. And it was good, it pulled up all the dog hair and then I'd go over again and it would get more dog hair and I just couldn't believe how well it was performing. So after using it a few times, I then just started to realise how bloody big, bulky and heavy it was. And when I wanted to, we've got three stories in the house. And when I wanted to go upstairs to lug this vacuum cleaner up there, and I know it sounds a bit dramatic because you know, I could carry it up there, but it like puts you off doing things, doesn't it? When something is difficult. So I'd lug it up there and also the cord. Uh, I was like, why did I get corded? I had gone in there with the mindset of cordless, but the guy said, no, you need the corded. Maybe he was trying to get rid of some old stock or something, but I was like, okay, listen to the guy. Um, so the cord is annoying and then it's big and bulky and like I can't lift it. And even the, the actual kind of dust collector of it is big. So if I want to like go underneath something, it just hits and 
oh, it was just really annoying me. And I was like, God, I spent 250 quid on this bloody vacuum cleaner and it really annoys me. So yeah, um, I do regret buying that one. The suction was okay, but even then it gets blocked up quite easy. It's supposed to have this anti hair wrap technology where it like cuts hair. And obviously when you've got long hair, you know what it's like, it gets everywhere. But sometimes it would just wrap around, it wouldn't cut it. So then you'd have to take the bottom off and really clean it out. And the way that he described to me in the shot was that literally I wouldn't have to do anything. It would just roam around, it would cut all the long hairs up, suck them up, you just empty it. It comes apart so easy. And you know, when I was in the shop, it was it was good. And I did get drawn in, but yeah, after I'd had about a month, I hated the thing. Um, I did do a video where I bought a load of John Lewis returns on a palette. And in there, I did get a Miele vacuum cleaner, but it's gone a bit funny now, which is probably why it was on a returns palette. But I had been using that one instead. And I love the cordless Miele vacuum cleaners. So at some point, I think when the house is finished, because we're renovating at the moment, when the house is completely finished, I will invest in a brand new Miele vacuum cleaner because they are just lovely. They're really powerful, they're really lightweight, they're small. I don't mind emptying the thing more often as long as the vacuum cleaner is small because it just hurts your back and your arm and you just can't be bothered with it. So yeah, the Miele will be what I do get to replace the Shark. But anyway, that is me finished complaining about all of these products, which none of them are terrible, terrible products, but they are products that I do regret buying and I regret spending a lot of money on them. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And again, let me know in the comments if you wanna see the opposite of this video, me talking about my favorite things that I have spent a lot of money on. And also let me know in the comments if you use any of these products and you love them. I don't mind a little bit of a debate, so feel free to comment. And if you're not already subscribed and you enjoy videos like this, then please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are staying safe and well, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.